right now on 5 on your side at 10. Warmer and increasingly muggy weather leads to better chances of showers and a few storms. How that may impact your Mother's Day plans. Transgender rights restricted. This is from clearly done for political reasons. I see this as an issue to protect young children. Tonight, reaction from both sides as new rules on trans health care and sports are just a signature away from becoming law in Missouri. And our top story tonight, a couple accused of firing shots on Cherokee Street. It was terrifying. She caused chaos. Police say they caught one of them. Tonight, questions on why Kim Garner's office refuses to file charges. Tonight, people along Cherokee Street, they're angry. Good evening, I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush, and tonight our Robert Townsend spent hours looking for reaction to the circuit attorney's much-talked-about decision. And he joins us live from outside St. Louis Police Headquarters downtown. Robert. Mike, police thought surveillance photos were enough evidence to get charges against that suspected shooter. Well, today we learned that was not the case. One business owner is among those furious tonight. That was the most terrifying thing ever. It was a night of terror for Cherokee business owner Brittany Morris, her staff, volunteers and customers. It was terrifying. I'm still um, I'm still not OK. St. Louis police say around 730 Saturday night, gunshots rang out during a Cinco de Mayo festival. Morris's security cameras caught the chaos on video. I just heard move get down get down she says dozens of festival goers ran for their lives right inside her shop we had people who ran out our basement people who ran out our back door people who were hiding here we monday st louis police released surveillance photos of a woman and a man they believe are responsible for the shooting wednesday morning police said they arrested the female suspect the department filed for first degree assault and armed criminal action charges. But the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office refused to charge the woman, citing lack of evidence and the victim refuses to assist. Why would you do that? She caused chaos, she caused uproar. This chaos came less than 24 hours after another shooting on Cherokee Street that left two people dead and Morris's front window shot out. She can't believe the female suspect is no longer in custody. I think that's absolutely terrible. We have to understand what message are we sending to the public. Like, you guys are literally sending her the message that she's the big bad wolf. Prosecutors' decision not to file charges today comes less than a week after an embattled Kim Gardner announced she's resigning on June 1st. The victim may not want to prosecute. That doesn't matter. I think what's really going on is this circuit attorney's office is probably in some disarray. Complete big disappointment. Now, police say they have identified the male suspect you see in this security image. Again, tonight they're still looking for him. As for Gardner's office, they tell us they are working closely with police on this ongoing investigation and can't comment any further. Live downtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. Missouri Governor Mike Parson is now taking applications for a new top prosecutor in St. Louis. The qualifications include record of fair and just application of state and local law, strong managerial experience, and a member of the St. Louis community. The application process will close May 15th. A new circuit attorney will take over June 1st, and they will serve the remainder of Kim Gardner's term through the end of 2024. Qualified candidates can apply online, and we do have a link on our website, ksdk.com. A nice, comfortable night in St. Louis, but that's good old St. Louis heat and humidity. It's coming back, and so are our chances of storms. Let's get to our weather chief, weather first chief meteorologist, Scott Connell. Well, you know, we are going to be bringing back that moisture. Some of us saw some showers today. There were a few around the metro area. Most of what we saw was south and southwest of St. Louis as you go down into the very rural areas of southeast Missouri and eastern portions of the Ozarks. You're still looking at a few showers here as you get down from Piedmont up towards center and back down towards Ellington. That's part of this whole large system that's circulating down to our south. Now it tends to weaken a bit when you lose the heat of the day. And that's what we're seeing right now. But as we head into tomorrow, that big plume of moisture slides overhead. That means showers will return on Thursday. It's not an all day rain. There may be a few rumbles of thunder, but severe weather is unlikely. 
and it will remain unsettled right into this weekend. We'll see in a few minutes talking about Mother's Day weekend and why the chance of showers and thunderstorms is still in the forecast on Mother's Day. Tonight, a 15-year-old boy is being charged as an adult in a violent home invasion in O'Fallon, Missouri. It happened back in January in the Wing Haven subdivision. Prosecutors say the teen and three others broke into a home, assaulted and shot the homeowner before stealing his car and money. Police arrested the group after a pursuit. An 18-year-old was also arrested and charged with robbery and assault charges. The 15-year-old is charged as an accessory. Two other teens remain in juvenile custody. Tonight, the Missouri State Highway Patrol is searching for the driver who shot at another car, causing a crash in St. Charles County. It happened just after 8.30 this morning on westbound 70 near Route A in Wentzville. The victim told investigators someone in a black Chevy Tahoe fired a shot at him, causing him to crash his green Cavalier into the median. The driver was not hit by the gunfire, but did suffer cuts from broken glass. The Tahoe took off. Troopers are asking for witnesses to come forward. Tonight, two bills that restrict transgender rights for Missouri kids is headed to Governor Mike Parson's desk, and he says he will sign them. One requires athletes to compete on sports teams aligned with their sex assigned at birth. The other would ban transgender health care for children under the age of 18. Our Laura Barczewski is here to explain what this means for young people seeking gender affirming care. Laura. Mike and Ann sponsors and supporters of this legislation say they are trying to protect children from making irreversible decisions. But parents and organizations supporting transgender children say they're actually doing the opposite. Senate Bill 49 prevents new transgender patients who are under the age of 18 from seeking out gender affirming care for the next four years. They are not allowed to, you know, uh, temporarily pause the changes in their body so that they can have that time to really understand who they are. Teens and kids who are already on a treatment plan have nothing to worry about for now, but those who want to start treatment are going to have to leave the state. Mike Walk has a transgender teen and he's grateful they started her therapies years ago. We're grateful for our kid that we get to stay here, that she gets to finish high school with all the friends that she's made and the teachers and administrators that she knows. Um, so there's that and we can hope still for a, a victory in the courts. Senator Mike Moon, the sponsor of the bill, says, quote, this bill prohibits the chemical mutation and physical castration of minors. Other supporters say they have one goal in mind. I don't see this as an LGBTQ issue. I see this as an issue to protect young children. Governor Mike Parson says, quote, all children, regardless of their gender or orientation, are invaluable and should not be subjected to potentially irreversible surgeries and treatments prior to adulthood. But those who are opposed say this bill is harmful. With legislation like this, it's purely done for political reasons. There's often an, uh, a bad aftermath for a lot of people. Robert Fisher with Promo says people are already experiencing the negative effects of this legislation. Just discussion of these bills alone throughout the five month session is damaging to youth's mental health. Um, it increases their risk to suicide and it increases their, um, you know, overall anxiety about the fact that people are debating whether or not they even exist. Walk says it's upsetting that other children might not be able to have the same experience his daughter has in being her true self. Her mental state is far, far better since she began taking the hormones and she feels, she feels good. It's wonderful to see. It's important to note this also impacts adults on Medicaid, which will no longer cover gender affirming care in the state. Again, the governor says he'll sign this bill and the sports one as well. Both will go into effect on August 28th. Tonight, Missouri's restrictions on transgender people is leading to a vacancy on Columbia's school board. As a family, we have made the difficult but necessary decision that Missouri is no longer a safe place for us. Catherine Sasser made that tearful public resignation on Monday night. Tonight, the board accepted it. Sasser, the mother of a transgender child, says her family is moving out of the state. Tonight, there is still time to give on this Give STL Day. Right now, organizations are trying to get a big boost from people all across our region who are showing their financial support. Five on your side's Brent Solomon is live downtown with a closer look at how the effort's going today. Brent. All right, $2.8 million. That's how much money St. Louisans have donated to this big effort. And I tell you what, this is going to nonprofits to help them stay afloat. Yeah. 
One of the groups receiving support today, Annie Malone. Just about everyone immediately connects the group with the annual May Day Parade, which is coming up, by the way, on May 21st. But there's so much more to the group. It works to meet the needs of the entire family, especially those going through a crisis or experiencing hardships. The CEO of that organization explains it well. The holistic model and approach when we go from a crisis center with kids to a parent advocacy program and, and helping parents who are at risk of getting their kids taken and those that are fighting to get their kids back from the system, then also having an education component of therapeutic school and also having a teen drug abuse and prevention to just to meet that need. All right, so happening right now is what Give STL Day calls the Power Hour. That means donations made to groups between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. places those groups into a pool that will make them eligible to receive a piece of a $20,000 prize. So there's still plenty of time left. Reporting live tonight, Brent Solomon, back to you. Normally, you'd only have a couple more hours to donate, but because it's the 10th anniversary of Give STL today, the St. Louis Community Foundation is adding an extra 10 hours of giving. You now have until 10 a.m. tomorrow to contribute as little as $10 to any of your favorite causes. Another power hour will happen at 9 in the morning, and all donations are tax deductible. Simply text GIVE to 314-425-5355 or go to kstk.com forward slash give to learn more.